Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to review how to form the active indicative for Latin verbs in all six tenses. This is going to go quick, but please feel free to pause, rewind, and review as needed. There are four conjugations of verbs in Latin. The first, second, third, a subset of the third known, known as third ios and fourths. You can identify a conjugation of a verb by its second principal part, and these thankfully go in alphabetical order. So first conjugations have a long a before the re, second conjugations have an, a long e, third and third ios have a short e, and fourths have an i. Knowing the conjugation is important because it allows you to better identify the tense and the mood of the verb being used. There are six tenses in Latin. There is the present tense, which corresponds to our present tense in English, verbs or verbing. There's the imperfect, which is unfinished or continuous action in the past, was or were verbing and the future, will verb. In the past tense, or the perfect system, there's the perfect tense, which is verbed or has verbed, the pluperfect, using the quintessential had verbed, and the future perfect, will have verbed. Every regular verb in Latin has four principal parts. It is important to know all the principal parts of a Latin verb because each one is used for specific reasons. They also can be translated. The first principal part of any verb is always the present active indicative first person singular, I love or I verb. The second principal part is known as the infinitive, to verb. The third principal part is the perfect active indicative first person singular, I verbed. And the fourth principal part is the perfect passive participle, having been verbed. Not only do these principal parts translate, they also are essential in forming the different tenses of a verb. The second principal part is used for the present system, both active and passive. The third principal part is used for the perfect active system. And the fourth principal part is used for the perfect passive. In order to form the present system for a first or second conjugation verb, you must go to the second principal part. From here, you drop the RE, and this gives you the stem. This stem is used to form the present tense, the imperfect, and the future. For the present tense, you simply take the stem plus your ending, and we'll review the endings in just a moment. For the imperfect, you take your stem plus BA plus ending. And to form the future, you take your present stem, then you add BO, B, or BOO, depending on the person and number of the verb, and then your ending. So let's take a quick look at these endings. These are known the, as the personal endings. They're by far the most common endings of all those available to verbs, and they are used in the present active system and all of the perfect system, except for the perfect active. I is signified by the letters O or M, U is an S, he, she, or it is a T, we is a mus, you all is tis, and they is NT. So let's see how this looks in practice. We love, we recognize as a present tense verb, so we take our stem, and then we find our ending. We has the ending of mus, and so we have ama added with mus equals amamus, we love. We can do this for the imperfect as well. They were loving. Were verbing means that it's imperfect. So we take our stem, we add our signifier ba, and then we find our ending they, equals nt, and so we add an nt, amabant. Finally, with future, 
You see that will in there that tells us that it is a future tense. We take our present stem. We add our ending, in this instance, bi, and then we add, sorry, we add our signifier bi, and then we add our ending. Here we have he, she, it, which means it's t, and so ama, bit. It is important to note that with the future, if it had been first person singular, it would be ama, bo, and if it had been third person plural, it would have been ama, bunt, with a bu. Now the third, third ios, and fourth conjugation verbs behave slightly differently, so let me quickly review these. We still go to the second principal part. We drop the re and we end with this stem, mite, for the third conjugation. However, in the present tense, instead of keeping that stem, the short e changes over to an o in the first uh, person singular, an i for most of the other persons and numbers, and a u in the third person plural. And then we follow with our ending. So we have things like mitis, you send, or mitunt, they send. For the imperfect, everything stays the same. We take our stem, we add BA, we add our ending. We were sending mite bamus. Now for the future, in the third, third ios, and fourths, instead of adding bo, be, boo, we do a vowel change. And that final E shifts over to an A or a long E. And then we add our endings. And so we have I will send is mid tom with an A, and all the others are going to use a long E. So y'all will send is metatus. The mnemonic for this is bo, be, boo in one and two, A and E in four and three. Third io and fourth conjugation behave very similarly. Here we are using a fourth conjugation verb. We are going to go to our second principal part. We drop our RE, we have our stem. For the present, we take this and we simply add our endings, just like we did for the first conjugation. And so we end up with audis, you hear, or copiunt. And notice that the third io, copio, retains the U of the third and the I of the fourth. In the imperfect, we add a BA, but we're also going to sneak an E in there as well, plus our ending, and so we end up with audie bamus. For the f future, once again, we're going to go with an A or an E for four and three, and then our ending, and we have I will hear audiam, or y'all will capture copy a tis. Now let's quickly review the perfect system in the active voice. For the perfect system active, we need to go to the third principal part. We drop the I, and this gives us our stem. The perfect system covers the perfect tense, the pluperfect, and the future perfect. We take our stem for all of these. For the perfect, we're going to add some special endings that I will talk about in one second. For the pluperfect and the future perfect, though, it's very similar to before. We have our perfect stem. Then for the pluperfect, we add the letters E-R-A, and then we add our personal endings. So we have amalweramus, we had loved. For the future perfect, we have our stem. We have the signifier E-R-O in the first person singular, or E-R-I in all other persons and numbers. And then we have our ending. So we have ama wero, I will have loved, and ama weritis, y'all will have loved. As I mentioned, the perfect share has its own set of endings, and these endings only apply to the perfect active indicative. They're e isti it, imus istis erunt. We just take our stem and we add these specialized endings. So, ama we, I have loved. Ama wisti, you loved. Ama we runt, they did love. And so, when asked to do a synopsis of these verbs, we can see in the active voice how we switch from stem to stem. We add our tense signifiers, these are the letters between the stem and the ending 
which tell us what tense it is. And then we have our endings. And notice that all the endings are the same, except for the slight variation in the perfect active entry. Here's a first conjugation verb, and we can see this in with a third conjugation verb as well.